Hi folks, Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Welcome back. Yeah, it's been a crazy year so far and we've been real busy. We did manage to get away a couple of times to enjoy the great outdoors in our secret camping spots. We visited some neat places, did some hiking, and enjoyed some great food. Both healthy and hearty and, well, not so much. We got up early to hit the trails and we also went to bed late. For the most part we had great weather, but then not so much. While we've been real busy in the print shop, I did take the time to start working on some model projects. This is my trusty little O-scale diorama, and that little guy is the focus of this video. Weathering a two-bay covered hopper using budget supplies and easy to apply techniques. We all know that there's a lot of methods and techniques out there that work well. We all have our favorites, right? The techniques that I use are not the be-all end-all, but they do work well to represent a believable weathered freight car. That's the basic supply list. You can pause the video if you need to. I'm going to answer this now because the question always comes up. You can use any commercial weathering powders labeled as such, or you can use the same basic artist chalks that I'm using here. You can find these locally at many craft stores or online such as teacher supply or art supply outlets. They're just artist chalks. They come in sticks and I ground them down using a cheese grater. If they need to be ground further, I stick them in the blender. If you haven't seen it, we have another video on the channel where we weather a budget boxcar. Many of the same basic techniques used in that video are used here. Also, there are some that are used on the boxcar that aren't used here and vice versa. So be sure to check it out. You'll notice that everything I'm using here is of the budget variety. As I've mentioned in previous videos, once you start weathering, you'll probably never get that car back to the way it was. So be sure to practice on an item of less value until you are comfortable with your techniques. I'm using two different washes in this video. This one is the solvent wash where we mix enamel paint and paint thinner, both solvents. The solvent wash will be applied to the entire car to produce a dulled down appearance. Coating the entire car will give some bite to the weathering layers that are going to be applied and it will add depth in the cracks and crevices where they would otherwise be all the same color. Now it's not rocket science and there's no specific ratio that I use. Just dab some enamel in the dish and add in some thinner. Use just enough to create a dirty mix. If it's too light, you can add additional coatings. While I'm doing this voiceover, the phone in the shop keeps ringing, so every time I have to answer it and get back to this, I lose my train of thought. Get it? <laughs> oh, come on. All right, really, you're just trying to lay down a coating over the entire car like a film. I didn't stop the video in between, but you may have noticed that I did the bottom first. Well, I also let it dry before I moved on to the top and sides. When doing the sides, I apply the wash to the upper areas and let it run down. This way, it'll create a more natural look. You hear that? Natural look. More like natural industrial look. I'm going to coin that phrase. As the solvent leaves the brush, sometimes it won't go all the way down the side of the car, so you have to give it a little help by using downward strokes. Okay, here's where we leave the standard routines behind and use some techniques that are a little different. When I say different, I mean only that I don't often see people using them. More often than not, I see folks trying to create this with paint, sometimes brush, sometimes airbrush. As I explain in every video where weathering is concerned, I always talk about the need for texture. Powdered chalk gives us the ability to not only add color, but add texture. That's why we're using chalk. For this wash, or mix if you want to call it that, we're using red and black chalk mixed in with alcohol to create a pasty or soupy mix that can be applied with a brush. For starters, I pulled off the hatches and started in that area. This way when the hatches are reapplied, there won't be any uncovered areas. Of course, some hatches might not come off, but you can use a pointy brush to apply under the hatch lip. I'm not going to apply this to the entire car, per se. I'm only applying in areas where there would be seams, joints, rivets, and that sort of thing. Or we can go a step further and just say where there might be evidence of rust. Just think about how nature works, where water runs down and it gets in cracks and seams and crevices. It pools, that sort of thing. You may need to apply several coats or you may need to adjust your mixture. You can add black to make it a little bit darker. But always keep in mind that when you're using red, it's always going to dry a little bit lighter than what you see. But we're going to blend all that in. I know it looks like a clown makeup here. Typically for the bottom of the car, I use a little thicker of a mix, meaning more chalk, less alcohol. And for the tops of the car sides, at least the upper area, I'm going to use a thinner mix, meaning more alcohol. So this way it runs down those seams. 
Now don't get all freaked out if you use a little too much or you accidentally get it in an area where you don't intend for it to be. Remember this isn't solvent based and it's not spray paint so you can take a little alcohol and brush it out. Nope, don't fear because it's all going to get blended in in the upcoming steps. Now if you did remove any of your accessory items like these hatches or brake fittings that sort of thing now's a good time to coat them all and get them ready. As you're watching me coat the roof walk here I do want to say that this alcohol mix tends to dry up quickly in other words the alcohol starts to evaporate and it ends up getting thicker and thicker so you have to keep adding more alcohol as you go. The rule of thumb is the thicker the mixture the more texture it's going to leave behind so here underneath the roof walk it's very thin this way it'll run down the top of the roof. Okay now let that dry. Now pay attention because we're going to change gears a little bit here. This is a dry rusty chalk mix. I repeat dry rusty chalk mix. It's the same color but it's a dry rusty chalk mix so we're going to dab it up under the roof walk. As you'll see we'll go around the car and we'll add this dry rusty chalk mix. There's the phone. Wow it's definitely a Monday morning for sure. Okay let's get back on track. We're going to carry the same process down to the underside focusing on the slopes and the frame and then move on to the ends of the car. We'll hit the walls and all accessories such as the brake cylinder, rigging, ladders and so forth. Keep in mind that this is all going to get blended in and dulled down but if you want your car to be super rusty then just leave it like it is. This is my favorite part of the process because it means we're getting close to being done. This is the blending. So with that we're now using gray chalk. I repeat gray chalk. I'm using a wider brush. Now remember this is dry. We're using dry gray chalk. I'm going to dab it up under the roof walk and then pull down. This is going to create a transition between the two colors. Now think back for a second. If I had only used the dry rust chalk up under that roof walk this gray would be pulling all that out of there. But remember before that we used the wet mixture so now what we're doing is we're able to leave a little bit of that color and transition it as we go down. We're going to apply this gray chalk to every part of the car that we hit with the wet mixture before. This will dull it down and give it a nice blending effect. Of course like anything else this whole process is subjective where you may want to leave areas more rusty than others. You be the judge. If it looks good leave it alone. If not go over it with that gray chalk. Remember this is all done on layers so if you find a spot that doesn't look quite the way you want it to look you can go back and start the process over in that particular spot. And of course on the sides I'm going to use up and down strokes. It was really tough trying to film and weather at the same time and I got some fingerprints on the car but I did get them off. Okay try to say flat black spray paint 10 times fast. Yeah this is like the 10th take. Well I'm tongue tied today. I'm going to spray these trucks and wheel sets with flat black spray paint. This is not only going to take away the new shine, it's going to add some bite to the weathering layers we're going to add. The second layer after the spray paint is the wet rusty chalk mix. So we're going to apply this to all areas of the truck and the wheels, both in and outside. Once the wet rusty chalk mixture is dry you can go ahead and start applying dry red chalk. Yep bright red. We're going to dumb it down with some black. But you want to get that on all areas of the trucks and wheel sets. If you've already seen our weathering track video this process may look familiar. And it's very wow there's the phone again. <sighs> okay so the process is very similar to weathering track or at least the rails. Okay I'm going to answer this question in advance because I'm sure someone's going to ask. How do you seal all this in? You don't. Real rail cars do not have sealed weathering. You put your hand on it, it's going to come off. The weathering doesn't just fall off the car, but be careful when you're handling them. Now let's get those wheels clean and put it all back together. I love doing this. I love my Dremel tools. Again there's a lot of methods and techniques out there that work great. Some are less effective than others when it comes to providing that much needed texture. Yep, texture. If nothing else, I hope this video simply makes you want to weather some freight cars. 
Be sure to subscribe, stay tuned, and share the hobby. This is Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.